Minasan konnichiwa. Hi everyone. In this video, I'll tell you about top 10 Japanese novels you should read. If you are interested in Japanese literature and don't know where to start, then these 10 novels will give you plenty to read. They are some of the best of Japanese literature. Also, if you don't want to read and just want to know what the big Japanese novels are about, then you will learn that here. But first, let me answer the pressing question. Why Japanese literature in the first place? I love Japanese literature for three important reasons. First, most Japanese novels tend to be short. In Japan, space and time are extremely important. Land being so scarce in this mountainous country that everything is made smaller like electronics. Even dogs are smaller and so are people. So Japanese novelists tend to write shorter and more minimalistic novels. Second, Japanese people like show more than tell. In Japan, you need to show you are a hard worker, show your courage in the battle to earn respect of your fellow samurai. Even manga culture is more show than tell. Also, the Chinese-based writing system of kanji is based on pictures. So Japanese novels show more than tell. You can draw your own conclusion. Japanese novels are very sparse with their details. And the final reason I love Japanese novels is that the minimalism also extends to the characters. Most Japanese novels are novels of loneliness. Living in such crowded cities like Tokyo and Osaka make you lonely. Connection is harder in a crowded room than a room with a few people. So Japanese novels tend to be more about lonely people. This appeals to me a lot. You might know the reason why if you care to read between the lines. I have discussed The Tale of Genji by Lady Murasaki a lot in several of my videos, so I have not included it in this list. The order these novels are presented is the order of their publication date, from first to last. 1906 Quote, Even the words of Shakespeare might be more thoroughly appreciated if they were re-examined from unorthodox positions. Someone, once in a while, should take a good long look at Hamlet through his legs. End quote. I am a cat by Natsume Sosuke. Sosuke, who was born in 1867 and died in 1916, is like a founding father of modern Japanese literature, and inside Japan he is considered the most important Japanese novelist and a favorite of Murakami. His life and writing career coincided with Japan's rapid modernization and he captured that dynamic transitional period beautifully. I am a cat is his most famous novel. His other novels are Bochan Kokoro. I Am A Cat is about a cat who observes those humans it encounters and captures the old Japan clashing with new Japan beautifully. A cat as a protagonist allows Sosuke more freedom to satirize middle class Japanese people. Haruki Murakami's novels are littered with cats and other animals, so as far as literary animals go, this is the first and the biggest cat in Japanese literature. Almost a tiger. But if you want something more entertaining, Sosuke's other novel, Bochan, is a better choice, which I discussed in my other video on Japanese literature. 1915 Quote, I could wish for nothing more than die for a childish dream in which I truly believed. Rashomon and Other Stories by Ryunosuke Akutagawa This is not a novel but a collection of short stories by one of the most original Japanese authors. Ryunosuke Akutagawa, born in 1892 and died in 1927, is a pioneer of unreliable narrator. He is the most celebrated short story writer in Japan. He committed suicide at the age of 35. The story in the bamboo grove not only questions human's ability to tell the truth, but also truth itself. Are we really able to see truth? Is there such thing as objective truth? This book also has some of the most revealing bits about Akutagawa's own life, titled The Life of a Stupid Man. In Japan, Akutagawa is as important as Sosuke, so I highly recommend you read his short stories. 1948 Quote, The more I feared people, the more I was liked. The more I was liked, the more I feared them. The process which eventually compelled me to run away from everybody. End quote. Ningen Shikaku, or No Longer Human by Osamu Dazai. Dazai was born in 1909 and committed suicide in 1948 at the age of 39. The novel is about what it means to be a real human being. What is our genuine selves? Is it the traditional roles you belong to or assigned to or you can shape your own self? Nowadays, the issue of gender, class and race are very prominent in the media. Group identity versus individual identity. It is somewhat similar to Kafka's dark world of individual as cog in the machine or Martin Heidegger's philosophy about alienation in modern world. Japan's rapid modernization from 1870s to 1930s came at a 
cost to individual Japanese people as they were mobilized to help the military state. Tazai is considered a critique of modernization of Japan and a strain of it on individuality among Japanese people. The social pressure to conform and hide your true self to prevent social isolation, ostracization by others. It's a brilliantly honest novel about individual identity like a flower growing on a concrete, so fragile in the face of social pressure. 1956. The high, thin nose was a little lonely, a little sad, but the butt of her lips opened and closed smoothly like a beautiful little circle of leeches. Yukiguni or Snow Country by Yasunori Kawabata. Kawabata was born in 1899 and died in 1972, was the first Japanese to win the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1964. His style is very unique among Japanese novelists. He's got a more Japanese style similar to The Tale of Genji by Lady Murasaki, often leaving things unexplained and for the reader to understand them from the context. This makes him more difficult for Western audience. Snow Country is his most well-known novel about a man who visits a spa town and gets enamored with a few women. Shimemura is like a modern day Prince Genji, unable to settle with one woman. One of the most beautiful scenes is when Shimemura is on the train and catches the reflection of a young girl superimposed on the planes outside through the train window in the evening light. He is too embarrassed to stare at her directly but watches her reflection on the window pane. The novel basically boils down to a battle between one man and four women. It has a beautiful Beautiful writing of Kawabata that earned him a Nobel Prize. If I have to choose, I would say Kawabata is my favorite Japanese writer. Snow Country is like an untouched Japanese past that Kawabata recaptures in this novel. 1956 Quote, for clearly it's impossible to touch eternity with one hand and life with the other. End quote. The Temple of Golden Pavilion by Yukio Mishima. Mishima was born in 1925 and died in 1970, is perhaps the most controversial Japanese writer as in, and his suicide during an attempted coup in 1970 was bizarre as well as sensational. His more popular novels are Confessions of a Mask and The Sea of Fertility. Despite his right-wing political views, Mishima was a brilliant novelist and one of the most disturbing as well as exhilarating Japanese writers. The Temple of Golden Pavilion is based on a true story. In 1950, a priest burned down the most iconic temple in Kyoto, the Golden Temple or King Kakuji. In this novel, Mishima attempts to answer why, but also trying to answer questions such as what is beauty, jealousy and destruction. This exposes the most fundamental of human existential question, how can we hold on to something we have attained. In this case, it's beauty at its perfection. At some point, we have to let it go. But what if we don't want to? The Golden Temple, despite its beauty, goes somewhat against the Japanese concept of rustic beauty as in wabi-sabi. It is too shiny and flashy in your face. The novel tries to articulate that there is a very thin line between love, madness and destruction. 1962 Sand, which didn't even have a form of its own, yet not a single thing could stand against its shapeless destructive power. The very fact it had no form was doubtless the highest manifestation of its strength, was it not? The Woman in Dunes by Kobo Abe. Kobo Abe was born in 1924 and died in 1993, is often called Franz Kafka of Japan. His most well-known novel, The Woman in Dunes, is about an insect collector who missing his bus gets stuck at a village. Imagine you are stuck in the sand and your routine is to clean the sand every day. You do the same thing over and over. Imagine you finish work and you wake up the next morning and you have to do it all over again. It's a metaphor for our lives. He tries to escape, but as time passes he realizes it doesn't matter where he is, he's never going to be free. It's a brilliant novel and you can see hints of it in Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Shiguro and that we are destined to be useful for others, but we can never escape our life of suffering. 1964 quote, In this age of ours it's hard to say with certainty that having lived was better than not having been born in the first place. A Personal Matter by Kenzuburo Owe Owe was born in 1935, was the second Japanese to win the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1994. A Personal Matter is not an easy novel to read. It can be upsetting and heartbreaking at times. It's about an intellectual with grand future dreams, but his dream is shattered with the birth of his brain-damaged child. 
Part of it is a true story of Owe's own personal life, hence the title of Personal Matter. His own son was born with cognitive disability. A personal matter is mainly about one thing, one thing only, how our personal life hinders or helps our outlook on the world. A small tragedy in our life is hundredfold more important than serious tragedies in the world. We're a small creature with small lives, but occasionally we have big gigantic dreams. This novel is brutally honest about the dynamic between personal lives and societal change. 2003, The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Yogawa. It's a beautiful tale of a math professor whose memory only lasts 80 minutes after an accident and his housekeeper is a woman with 10 year old son. She has to introduce herself every morning as, as if they have never met before. The three of them make a makeshift yet beautiful family. The writing is so wonderful, it is a novel that makes numbers as beautiful as art. Here's an example talking about prime numbers. Quote, when you get to much bigger numbers, a million or ten million, you're venturing into a wasteland where primes are terribly apart like a desert. The sun shines down mercilessly, your throat is purged, your eyes glaze over. Then you think you see one, a prime number at last, and you go running towards it, only to find that it's just a mirage, nothing but wind. Still, you refuse to give up, staggering on step by step, determined to continue the search until you see it at last, the oasis of another prime number, a place of rest and cool, clear water." End quote. While reading, I was so engrossed that I tried to do the maths in the story. I'm sure you will do it too. The Housekeeper and Professor is a novel of falling in love with maths, baseball, mother and son, and a man without a son and a son without a father. It's a beautiful novel. 2005 when you come out of a storm, you won't be the same person who walked in. That's what this storm is all about. Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami I love Murakami for his storytelling. When I grab one of his books, I can just relax like watching my favorite TV show. He tells me everything and I don't have to think much. After reading a heavy book, I often go to one of his novels and everything feels so much easier. I made a whole video talking about Murakami's novels and his style of writing. I'll link it down below if you like to watch. Kafka and the Shore has all the elements that make Murakami unique and bizarre. Kafka, just like the real Franz Kafka, hates his own father and escapes from him. There are many bizarre events in the novel like cats talking to humans or fish raining from the sky, but the novel focuses on Kafka and one more character who due to his childhood experiences during the second world war lives a very unusual life. It's a great novel. 2016 Quote you eliminate the parts of your life that others find strange. Maybe that's what everyone means when they say they want to cure me." End quote. Konbini no Hito or Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata Murata was born in 1970 and worked at a convenience store for 18 years but rose to fame with his debut novel about her experience working there. The main character is Keiko, a 36-year-old woman who has only worked one job, a temporary worker at a convenience store. Not married, no boyfriend, no career, not even a hobby. Her entire life is defined by work at the convenience store. When she meets another misfit, a man who cannot even manage the job at a convenience store, her life is about to take a dramatic turn. Keiko quits her job, but her experience at the convenience store has changed her forever, that no force big enough to bring her back. A brilliant novel, very short, and on the surface doesn't seem like a literary masterpiece. The language and the story are very simple, but it touches you deep inside. Quote, I am one of those cocks going around and around. I have become a functioning part of the world, rotating in the time of the day called morning. It's a beautiful novel and I highly recommend it. Well, these are my top 10 Japanese novels. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if I have missed some other great novels. Thank you for watching. Now, if you want to win a book of your choice from my Japanese shelf, just leave a comment down below. Any comment is fine. I'll select one person randomly and later will ask you to choose the book you would like to receive and send the book to you anywhere in the world. I mean anywhere in the world. Please take a moment to share this among your friends on social media. I'm on a journey to read books and stories from every country on earth. Helps me a lot if you liked and shared this among your friends. Thank you.